bringing Cole back into the fold? Yeah, you know, just you, know, you look to you look to add players that um, you think can help your football team. So uh, that's really the situation here. Do you acknowledge that maybe since you need some help in that slot position, you haven't maybe gotten what you'd hoped for? For instance, what Cole gave you last year? Well, again, I mean, you're like I said, you're always looking to improve your football team. So <clears throat> I think Isaiah's done some good things. You know, Crowder before that did some nice things also, and um, you know, we're seeing if see if we can improve some of what we're doing. Um, you know, offensively in this case. Sean, are you intrigued by <coughs> what you feel the advantage might represent for both the Bills and the Dolphins this year, given that you played in those sweltering conditions back in September, and now you could be playing in a snowstorm, and, and how that kind of evens out the schedule in some ways? Uh, I really just focused on trying to win this one game. Uh, that's really where our focus is. Oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just really focused on this one game, and... Um, you know, improving as a team overall, to, to Sal's question earlier. Hey, Sean, if I could ask just one more thing on, on Cole, just in terms of what he brings. Brandon had just said he, he sees the game in a unique way, kind of like Josh does, in terms of reacting to what a defense is doing, you know, getting open, that sort of a thing. And there's obviously symmetry between the two of them. Could you, have you observed that in coaching him through the years? And, and what does that element mean? Yeah, he's a smart football player. Um, I think that that goes without saying, really. And um, he's got a good rapport with Josh as well, as Brandon mentioned. And <clears throat> um, he's played this game a long time. He grew up in a, in a uh, football family with his dad, you know, coaching him. So um, when you when you grow up around that type of environment, usually you have a pretty good feel for the game. Sean, how much can you take from the first meeting with Miami, understanding <clears throat> the role the elements played? You guys were pretty depleted. Different guys were in the lineup. How much can you take up, take from that? Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm. We look at it, and um, you know, the, you try and develop through the year. So that was <clears throat> early in the season. I think game was a game three. Um, so now we're in December, and um, you know they beat us in that game, and and um, you know I thought I had a pretty good plan, and and uh, um, so we've got to obviously make some adjustments this go around. Just to clarify. <clears throat> Yeah, same thing he's been dealing with. Yeah. Are there? Let me ask you this: Are there any inherent advantages that the Bills might have being accustomed to playing in windy, colder conditions going into this weekend? I mean, they're going to be in the same conditions we're in. Um, you know, it's not like every day we're out playing in six inches of snow around here. You know, so I think perceptually, people get this perception of that we go out and practice in the snow every day, um, but. Um, you know, we're just like I said, working on being focused and and uh, improving as a team. Yeah, given all the factors that have gone into the, the, the secondary with the injuries you've had, and you're trying to get these new kids and find their their way in the NFL, has this been as challenging a you know, a positional group that you've had maybe in in, in a while? Getting that all to meld together with the, the secondary in general, with all the injuries and all the new guys that you've been playing every every week, has it been a Particular challenge, I guess, back there for you. Well, I mean, there's always challenges, and <clears throat> you know, you're you're moving pieces around. You're trying to find the right combinations. You're trying to find the right people in those different spots. Uh, maybe to your question, Sal, and um, you know, we remain confident in all those guys, and um, they've all done a phenomenal job of staying with it and, and staying positive. And when their number hasn't been called in particular, and then when their number is called, being ready to go. Yeah, he's looking good. He's worked his butt off, man, to get back to where he is. And um, uh, we'll just see where it goes going forward. But uh, we've always been big Ike Bucker fans. And when you watch what he went through and how he rehabbed <clears throat> to get himself back to where he is, that just that's added to the um, to his story, if you will. And I think that's good. Uh, we'll see just one day at a time. Yeah. Sean, your team can clinch a playoff spot this week. I know you have a good playoff caliber and the messaging and things like that. Um, what is the messaging this week to maybe be able to achieve one of your goals if you guys get the job done Saturday night? Yeah, really, Sal, again, just looking you know, to try and uh, play better against a good Dolphins team. Um, like I said, a team that beat us, and they've got incredible speed offensively, athleticism, length. Uh, on
on both sides of the ball, in particular on defense, and uh, they can run extremely well. They've got a good kicking game. Um, so just, you know, again, trying to um, uh, play at a higher level than we did before. Just your experience as coaching the defense, I don't know linebacker tandem might be the same, but what makes Milano and Tremaine so good in how complementary they seem to be? Yeah, I mean, again, I think that comes from being out there together for whether it's just practice or, or games. Um, you know, just that, that continuity of being around one another, knowing we, what each other are thinking and what one another are thinking and, and watching film in the room after, you know, after the coaches are done together. Um, that goes a long way in terms of building that, that relationship and that being able to play well together um, in that tandem, like you said. Uh, yeah, um, I, you know, I think more than anything, it's just a, um, hey, get, get the job done type of approach. Like, do your job, know your job, get it done. I don't want to hear about excuses. I don't want to hear about this and that, where you were drafted, you know, what your journeys look like, just kind of that, that type of attitude. And I think that um, that's, uh, that's been good to, good to see. Sean, when it's a guy like Cole or John Brown before, and they have familiarity with what you've done, when they come in, it, this isn't training camp, right? We're December, so is it ramped up, and is it? Are you looking more physically or catching back up? And then in terms of them, maybe with extra meetings or time, yeah. because you know we're late in the season. No, I think you got to look at all of it, Mike, and and it's never just one. In the, in in those situations, it's really rarely one area that needs to um, kind of be checked, if you will. Um, so you want to go through as many of those areas as you can in a, in a short amount of time and and then make sure that you're a putting the player in a position to be successful and b that they can do the job and and you know is it physically yes is it mentally yes is it um you know playbook wise yes so there's there's more than one John, are you confident that whatever was going on when he left here or whatever that was that that's in the past kind of sealed off and and might not come back to affect anything moving forward yes Solid here. You guys are familiar with him. You played him yeah. a bunch of times. What challenges does he present? And also, as that D line as a group, how much different is it now with Bradley Chubb than it is? Yeah, I mean, they that they did a good job at the trade deadline of adding Chubb to that to that defense and uh, great player. Uh, and then Wilkins is having a great year. Uh, he's a great player also. Um, so he's a force to be reckoned with. Um, both of those guys are, and and uh, someone that we have to. Uh, that's part of the challenge this week and going into the game is handling those guys. Uh, you know, I think sometimes the ball bounces in funny ways, and um, you know they, they're you know, just as talented. And I think they again have a, a top one of the top passing offenses in the league, one of the top scoring offenses in the league, and um, you know some. So I just think that um, you know they it seems like uh, you know just haven't been able to maybe uh, convert all the ways that they want to convert, but still very potent, uh, very dangerous offense. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.